and welcome to Ekevita Reviews. Today let's take a look at Mazda diesel engines and find out how they should be maintained, what you should avoid doing to these engines and what precautions you should take to prevent any issues from arising. Several people had requested for this video earlier but apologies for the delay. So we are going to get as in-depth as we can and try to understand what exactly is wrong with these Mazda diesel engines, especially the CX-5 so that you can know what exactly should be done to avoid problems from arising. Generally, these engines can be reliable, but only if you are very careful with the maintenance and also engage mechanics who are proficient and who fully understand these engines. Something that people have come to realize is that you may have a problem with the engine and you just take it to any mechanic who may consequently end up making matters worse. So it's very important to engage a qualified mechanic who understands what he or she is doing. We are going to begin with the simple and basic things such as quality of diesel, then the engine oil, service intervals, the DPF. Then we will move on into more complicated issues such as the cooling system and head gaskets. And we will just see how a very small error can lead to a chain of complications which can end up damaging the turbo and even totally damaging the engine. So let's begin with number one which is where you fuel. You really need to watch out where you refuel your diesel. You should not just refuel anywhere because you may unknowingly be purchasing diesel that has already built up sludge and this will definitely affect your engine's performance. You may start noticing lower fuel efficiency hesitation when accelerating, rough idling, and even engine problems. Generally, the shelf life of diesel is between 6 to 12 months depending on the conditions of storage. If it's not stored properly, it will start degrading and you as the buyer will never know. So you will keep buying, buying and yet it's gradually affecting your engine. You need to be choosy on where exactly you refuel. Does that petrol station have a, a lot of traffic or is it dormant? If it's dormant, then it may be a sign that its quality of oil is not so good and people have noticed it and they are now avoiding it. In fact, the fuel that is brought in may be of good quality, but being that it is stored poorly, it may now lead to degradation of the diesel. So watch out for that. Have a specific place or maybe two or three places where you fuel, not just any petrol station. The second issue is with regard to which engine oil you use on your Mazda diesel engine. It's very important to use the recommended oil. You should at least know the viscosity index and even API service category of the oil your engine is supposed to use. I was surprised to learn that there are people who just go to a service station or to a garage, then they leave the car there for it to be serviced, then they come back later, pay, then pick the car. It's not such a good idea unless if the garage or service station is well known and qualified and you also trust them fully but it's still good to have the knowledge of which oil, air filter and other components that should be used in the car. So now for a Mazda 6 diesel or even Mazda Tenza, it's recommended that you use Mazda Ultra DPF original oil with a viscosity index of 5W30 or 10W30. The viscosity index is how thick the oil is. There are alternative oils that can also be used such as Remula R6 with API service category CJ4. The viscosity index for that oil is 10W40. I'm saying this because you may maybe use another alternative oil with a viscosity index that is higher, meaning that that oil will be much thicker and this may affect the engine in that there will not be proper lubrication because of resistance on some metal components such as the pistons and this can even lead to a slight drop in the fuel efficiency now the third issue is the service intervals and it's related to number two that we have just discussed for these diesel engines service them after every 5000 kilometers for the minor service and 10,000 kilometers for the major service these cars come from Japan, Singapore, and even UK, where the road conditions are way better than here in Kenya. So you find that they, they service them after maybe 10,000 kilometers for the minor service. Don't follow that trend because for one, these diesel engines, especially the CX-5, is sensitive to dust. 
and here in Kenya we have a, a lot of dust and it gets worse especially if you tend to drive on maram roads frequently this means you must frequently replace the air filter because if you wait until 10,000 kilometers dust particles will end up clogging the air filter and consequently the engine will be starved of adequate air then what will happen next is that combustion will not occur properly this will affect the performance of the engine and even fuel consumption so don't wait until 10,000 kilometers. Our road conditions are different. So just do the service earlier. Another reason why it's very important to change the oil frequently is the turbo. The turbo uses oil for lubrication and also cooling. And among the things that can kill a turbo are contaminated oil or inadequate oil. So please change the oil after every 5,000 kilometers. And as I said earlier, use the original recommended oil or original alternative oil. The next thing is the DPF or diesel particulate filter. The function of a DPF is to trap soot and prevent it from going into the environment because it is harmful and it can cause respiratory issues. So what normally happens is that once the soot is trapped by the DPF, it is then burned off through a process known as regeneration and this burning is important because it prevents the soot from blocking that DPF or that diesel particulate filter. For the regeneration to take place, the car must be moving. Now, there are three types of regeneration. The first one is known as spontaneous or passive regeneration and it occurs undetected. There won't even be any indication on the instrument cluster. The second type is known as dynamic or active regeneration and it will occur if the spontaneous regeneration has not, has not occurred as well as when the DPF has reached its storage capacity of holding the suit. At this stage, there will be an illumination on the instrument cluster. So what should happen is that you should keep driving so that this active regeneration can get complete. But if you keep driving for short distances and stopping, then this regeneration will not complete. And remember at that point, the DPF has already reached its maximum holding capacity of the suit. So you will start seeing an indication on the instrument cluster, notifying you that a service regeneration has to be done or has to be conducted. And this requires a professional mechanic. This is the reason why you mostly hear that you should only go for a diesel engine if you will be doing long distances because it will enable the, the regeneration to occur. But if you only do short, short journeys or short distances, maybe from home to work and back, then you will definitely keep having problems with the DPF. And this is not just restricted to the Mazda diesel engines. It can occur to any modern diesel engine that has a diesel particulate filter. So what you can do is that you can maybe have a professional mechanic delete that DPF once and for all. Or if you tend to be traveling for long journeys frequently, then it may not give you frequent problems. But still, at some point, you will need to replace that DPF. So the only permanent solution is deleting it. It will save you money in the long run. The next issue we, we will look at is the cooling system. Some of these CX-5s have had problems with the radiator covers and something as small as this can end up causing the car to overheat. Let's first understand how the cooling system works. Then we will point out where the issue occurs and how it can be solved. So when an engine is running, it produces a lot of heat and the purpose of the cooling system is to get rid of this heat to prevent the engine from overheating. Among the components of the cooling system are a radiator, the radiator cover, the radiator hose, coolant, and expansion tank. Now, when the temperature increases, the coolant in the radiator expands and pressure increases in the radiator. This forces the pressure valve in the radiator cover to open and allow the excess coolant to flow into the expansion tank. So the function of the expansion tank is to hold the overflow of the coolant from the radiator. If the car comes to a stop, then the engine cools down 
there will now be a negative pressure because once the temperature decreases the coolant will contract so there will now be space in the radiator and since there will be negative pressure the coolant from the expansion tank will now be sucked back into the radiator so the problem with the Mazda 6F diesel is that some of these radiator covers don't allow the coolant to get sucked back into the radiator so you will not know that you will just drive the next time not knowing that there is almost no coolant in the radiator and this will then lead to engine overheating and this overheating in itself is a sign that there is a problem in the cooling system another way in which you can detect that there is a problem with the cooling system is coolant leaks and this may happen this way if the temperature increases to the point that the radiator cover should now allow the overflow to move into the expansion tank but the valves fail to release it the coolant will be forced to leak out through the weakest point and that can be anywhere it can be somewhere through the cover itself or maybe even through the radiator another way in which you can also detect a problem with the cooling system is through an overflowing reserve tank maybe the radiator cover is malfunctioning and it ends up releasing coolant into the reserve tank prematurely before there is enough pressure this will lead to excess overflow into the reserve tank and it may start leaking so the cooling system is something that you should check very very keenly in this Mazda diesels especially the CX-5 because once the car starts overheating it can even cause the crankshaft to break and that will now mean you have to replace the engine which will be very expensive so be very keen with the cooling system check the radiator check the radiator cover the expansion tank and the radiator hoses check for any leaks and do it frequently don't assume that all is well and if you see any signs that there may be a problem then have a professional mechanic inspect the car and if there are any components that may need a replacement then do the replacement with the original and genuine parts lastly let's talk about the head gasket it's already well known that the CX-5 came with a weak head gasket and once it fails it can cause some very serious issues let's first understand what a head gasket is and what its function is a head gasket is a metallic or ceramic material that provides a seal between the engine block and the cylinder heads in such a way that it prevents coolant and engine oil from leaking into the cylinders. It also prevents loss of pressure and seals combustion gases within the cylinders such that they cannot escape. So what happens is that being that this head gasket is weak, it may not provide a proper seal and as a result of this some of the coolant will start leaking into the cylinder and when this happens you may notice the car having some whitish smoke in the exhaust if you notice this while you are driving don't ignore it and keep driving stop and if possible get a mechanic to inspect the car and find out what exactly the problem is you may force the car to keep moving then end up making a simple matter much more worse you can also check the dipstick if you notice some milky substance on it then it may be a sign that the coolant is seeping into the oil and that's a sign that the head gasket is not working as it should so now being that the coolant is leaking it only means one thing that the engine may begin overheating especially if you ignore and keep driving what will be happening now is that the engine will get stabbed of the coolant which is responsible for getting rid of the heat and as i said earlier this overheating can lead to total engine damage because even the crankshaft can break the turbo can also die because now being that the oil has already been contaminated it may affect the turbo remember there are three main things that affect a turbo the first one is lack of oil the second one is con contaminated oil and the last one is foreign materials oil dilution can also occur if the injectors also fail and this will further contaminate the oil because now the oil will be contaminated by diesel so there's a lot that can go wrong and you can just see how one issue can cause several other serious issues if care and early precaution is not taken so what should you do if you already have a mazda 6 5 diesel the moment you detect any signs of overheating get a mechanic to check the car properly because it may be either the cooling system or the head gasket 
if it's detected early enough then it will not lead to more damage or ultimately engine death if it's the cooling system then you may need to replace a few components depending on the extent of the damage if it's suspected that it's the head gasket then just replace it early enough don't ignore and keep driving because the problem will get worse and it may kill the turbo or even the engine itself so just to summarize check on where you fuel use the recommended oil do the service frequently watch out for the dpf you can delete it or be doing long journeys frequently keep an eye on the cooling system lastly keep your eyes peeled for any signs of head gasket failure now would i recommend that you just replace the head gasket even if the car is just okay no i would not recommend that because there are other mazda diesel vehicles such as the cx5 and the tensor that have been working for years without any problem so it's not necessary to rectify a problem that is not in existence the best you can do is to be very careful with the maintenance but the moment you detect anything strange or unusual take action immediately don't ignore and keep driving for those who are thinking of buying a diesel 6 5 or even a tensor they are not bad vehicles it's just that you need to be very careful with the maintenance use the original parts and don't just fuel anywhere a diesel engine cannot take a beating like a petrol engine can so i hope this has been helpful thanks a lot for watching up to this far if there's anything that i may have left out feel free to let me know please consider subscribing to the channel for more informative content on cars you can also use the details in the description box to support the production of this content by donating your support will be much appreciated if you have any inquiries or are interested in local used car inspection services or would even like to advertise your car for sale on the channel feel free to reach me via email or whatsapp that's it for this episode stay safe see you in the next one